Welcome to another episode of Dr. Simone Says. My name is Simone Eastman Yuan. I am a medical doctor with sickle cell disorder. I am also the best-selling author of the books All Rise, The Sickle Cell Community versus the Medical Establishment, and A Doctor in a Patient's Body, Dreaming Big with Sickle Cell Disease and Chronic Pain. These days, I like to spend my time making sure that every sickle cell survivor becomes a sickle cell thriver because it matters that we live well. Hello everybody, this is Dr. Simone here. How are you? Long time. I wanted to uh, drop a quick video, um, short but sweet, uh, regarding uh, pulmonary fibrosis in sickle cell disease. And I wanted to address this problem because of something that happened to me today, as you all know, I wear portable oxygen, uh, supplemental oxygen, and um, I think that pulmonary fibrosis in sickle cell disease is not something that we d we talk about often. Um, I had a test today called a six minute walk test, and what that is is that um, someone puts you at rest and if you wear oxygen like myself they'll remove the oxygen the supplemental oxygen just have you breathe on room air to see what you would normally do just at room air well obviously I'm wearing oxygen to begin with because at room air I plummet I've been known to plummet to the high to mid 70s so um so as soon as people start to see me fall quickly into the eight, mid 80s they usually you know rush to put on two liters of oxygen uh, on me and um in this case uh, the the way that the six minute uh test goes is that it um basically sit for a while they determine that you you know that you desaturate or that your oxygen drops that's the other name for your oxygen percentage dropping in your blood is that you're desaturating so they notice that you desaturate and the cutoff point is always 89 for you to be able to get home oxygen uh, that always gets established really quickly for me and then after that becomes the um, exertion uh, test. So for six minutes, they will have you walk with oxygen. Now what they're trying to do is to decide how much oxygen do you need to just do your daily functions. We're not talking about running marathons here. We're just talking walking back and forth, not in a hurry, just walking back and forth for six minutes. And about two minutes in, as you know, as usual, I tried to slow it down so that it didn't like show up too quickly. But it's about two minutes in, um, we had to stop because again, I was plummeting into the 80s. And so, um, so, so the young lady then said, okay, so, you know, we need to put you in three liters, which I already knew. So, um, I'm currently, you know, um, on three liters, right? And um, and up until today, I thought, you know, okay, three liters. So, um, but, so she put me on the three liter and we keep walking, right? So I still have like two minutes to go and I'm dropping, I'm dropping, I'm dropping again, right? And I have this little pulse oximeter on my finger and I'm like, oh, please do not fall under 90 because then I'm on four liters of oxygen and one company, one oxygen company, I was about to say the name, but I will refrain just in case others don't agree. But one oxygen company had told me, you know, try not to get to four liters a minute because we can't reliably say that our home oxygen concentrator is going to reliably deliver four liters a minute for you with with our machine so whatever you do you know what you know exercise your lungs protect your lungs try not to get you know uh, respiratory infections all that kind of stuff uh, because if you get to four liters a minute 
it becomes problematic because we can't reliably support you. And so then I thought, well, what happens after that? And so, you know, they said, well, then you start having to look at things like lung transplants. And I thought, what? I mean, even though I know that I have pulmonary fibrosis, like I wouldn't, that's, that seems like a whole other world to me, right? So it, it was a shock to even hear. And so I've been trying to be very protective of my lungs. Um, I have um, a, chemical a chemical mask for if I ever, you know, uh, if there's ever like fresh paint or people are doing any kind of work with any kind of uh, fumes even on the outside of our house you know that I put on and things like that so with everything that happened you know today I was just sitting in shock and I thought you know the only thing that you can do with with that kind of disappointment is to teach <laughs> that's the only thing I know any good that could come from it is to teach and so Pulmonary fibrosis is basically a thickening of the little alveoli in your lungs. The lungs look like a sponge and though the sponge, all those little like uh, bubbles um, are called alveoli and they're supposed to be thin, like they're supposed to be very thin so that the little capillaries, like when your blood from the heart is sent to the lungs for for it to pick up oxygen it should those walls should be thin so that carbon dioxide from your body would diffuse out of your of your blood and into um, the alveoli to be breathed out and then at the same time you're taking breaths in and the air that is in those alveoli are going to cross over that thin membrane and go into your blood and oxygenate your blood. And then the blood takes that back to the heart and then pumps it through the whole body so that the whole body gets oxygen. Now the reason why um, I have portable oxygen is because my, my lungs, those little walls have become thick from scarring and repeated uh, lung infections and things like that and so th it takes a long time for for oxygen to cross over those thick membranes and get into uh, the bloodstream to be able to go and oxygenate the body and so with time you know I of course started on two liters of oxygen and what that meant is that I was getting extra oxygen at a higher concentration of oxygen than what I would breathe at, breathe at room air was going in with the hopes that if you increase you know the concentration of oxygen that more will be able to get into and across this thick membrane and into your bloodstream to, to, to supply your body, right? Um, I think it's amazing that I look, you know, t like to everyone, like I'm totally fine. And yet that I, I have this challenge where if I pick up my pace just a little bit, my oxygen will start to plummet because I'm using oxygen faster than I can replace it in my body so if I were to try to exercise for example and I still do try to do you know basic stretches and things like that but if I were to even try to do any kind of aerobic exercise my oxygen plummets to where it is there's a big deficit because the time it's taking to cross the membranes of the lungs to get into the blood circulation is too slow in comparison to what the body is using up in the exercise. And so when there's that gap, you basically drop in the, in the percentage of oxygen in your body 
stress your red blood cells and you're you're pretty much um, you know triggering a sickle cell crisis uh, if, if if that's prolonged and so um, and so I know like for example after the test I just came in I took a shower and that was it for the rest of the day because now I am just even for those moments of 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 drops I want to make sure that I oxygenate, oxygenate, take deep breaths. You know, I took my incentive spirometer, you know, that little machine that they give you and they say, take deep breaths and see how much lung volume you have. So I take that out. It's always sitting on my nightstand because, you know, I try to um, uh, practice with it. And so I take it out and I take deep breaths and try to just expand my lungs to be able to um, create more space, if you will, for all of the supplemental oxygen that's coming through my line and, and, and from my nasal cannula into my lungs and into the bloodstream to reoxygenate my body. And so I want you guys to please take good care of your lungs because we talk, we do talk a lot about, you know, our blood and what to do, how to build our blood and all of those things. But what we don't talk about is our lung capacity and our ability to take oxygen from our lungs to our bodies and what it means for us to have a respiratory infection that could actually scar our lungs and cause thickening of those membranes and cause uh, a problem with oxygen getting across and into your bloodstream to be able to deliver around your body. So um, I hope that this helps. I hope that you understand if you have any questions about pulmonary fibrosis with respect to sickle cell disease, uh, please leave a message in the comment section on the YouTube channel and um, I check there because I will post this in many groups but I can't keep track I can't uh, keep track of every group so the the thing that helps me as I try to take care of myself is is if uh, you would uh, put your comments in the comment section so that I could go one place and see what questions you have and try to help answer them for you. I hope that this was helpful and um, have a great rest of your week you guys. Take care. Until next time this is Dr. Simone Says and remember you are a sickle cell thriver and not just a survivor. If you benefited from this episode any at all please like on the video, subscribe to the channel and share the video with one other person as your good deed towards the sickle cell cause. Have a great day. If you would like to contact me to speak in your area, please don't hesitate to email me at says at gmail.com. If you are the one referring me, please let me know so that I could send you a nice thank you surprise.